and um, they got to the hospital, so I drove to the hospital. Now, mind you guys, I'm freaking out on the way to the hospital. I'm already making, um, you know, getting at peace with my son, not possibly, you know, being alive. Um, just because, you know, that's where my mind takes everything is extremes, you know. So I'm already dealing with that just in case that way I don't have a heart attack or, you know, make even a bigger scene of shit. And, uh, yeah, I get to the damn hospital and the two nurses at the front were, you know, the registrars or whatever, you know, they might as well be working at damn McDonald's. Um, then, uh, so I'm waiting a few minutes and then, uh, you know, I had to go outside because I couldn't be in there and, then I went back inside when his grandfather and, and um, then the lady came out of this little room in the, in the back, out of the lobby area, and it's a little office room, I guess, and there were two women, there's one woman in the room, and then she came out of the room with, oh, and, oh, and then they all got masks on, man, you guys don't even know what that shit does to me, like, someone comes with me with a mask on, and I feel immediately like I'm in danger. I feel like I'm in danger immediately, you know? Oh, and they were all wearing masks, man. And this little fucking bitch came up to me with her goddamn mask on and she had a Spanish accent. I couldn't understand a fucking word. And she was crying me. I said, look, I said, you gotta get back. I got PTSD. And she got back and she's, so she just kept up. She's like, I need you to come into this room. And I said, I am not going into that fucking room. I said, I have PTSD. I said, I have fucking major brain injury. I said, whatever you need to ask me, you ask me out here. And they literally acted like that was a fucking inconvenience. Like they looked at each other like, mm, I don't know if we can do that. There was literally nobody in the lobby except for me and his grandfather and his sister. These guys are so about protocol and loving their fucking machines and that if it doesn't fall right in line and, and you don't fall in step with exactly with the norm, you're fucked, dude. And they make you feel like a fucking, like you're from outer space. So finally, you know, once they figured out that it was okay to ask me a couple questions right there, she literally asked me like three questions. I mean, guys, you don't understand like everything, it, it, why I am taking, I, like I can't even help it. Like through this story, taking a stand is because I'm on my last defense, you know? I'm constantly fighting for my life, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> these people. They, man. I don't know. And um, she asked me three simple questions that I gave her, and she turned around and said thank you and walked away. So then I had to go back outside until they, they put my son and did a CT scan. And so I walked outside until they got him in the room and when we were ready and then I, they came and got me and I went in on there. And, uh, and then we ran into, so then the nurse in there, you know, guys, you know, the only people in hospitals usually that have any kind of empathy or heart or true care for anybody other than themselves or the system is some nurses, like the ones who directly take care of you, you know, even them, you know, you gotta be careful, man. Even them, you gotta be careful. But every once in a while, you know, I, I won't say every once in a while, man, they're out there, guys. The nurses, I'm not, I don't think you're heroes at all. I think that's a big fucking joke. I think they're just playing everybody against each other. I think we're all heroes, the people who go against the machine and listen to their empathy for their fellow humans. Um, so, the doctor came in, and so the nurse was very nice. She tried to get away with a couple things, but I, you know, I was, 
um, I just take my stand. I'm like, no, I want to know what you put in his body. Don't just tell me he got an injection or, uh, you know, an IV. I want to know what went in him. I mean, this is my son. You're telling me that you're just going to, the state is just going to put shit in him and then just blow it off to his, to his family. Like, oh yeah, we'll put something in him. Don't worry about it. No. So, you know, I had to take my stand with her on that. I was like, you need to, I want this verified, you know? And it was just saline, you know, it was just saline. And of course it makes me look crazy because I'm, I'm, so by the time the doctor got in there, everybody had already told him how fucking crazy I was, I'm sure. Because he didn't even want to fucking look at me. He had such a, like, detested me, you know, like, had such a, ugh. like, like, he didn't want to get too close to me or look at, get anywhere looking at my eyes because he might melt. You know what I mean? I mean, it was like just disgusting man these guys are such sociopathic guys doctors are such sociopaths man just like police officers sociopaths that's most people just like big businesses sociopaths those are, those, these are the types of jobs pastors are sociopaths any types of position jobs you know where they're in, where they can have power over people you know or be take charge you know and these cocksuckers will fucking they love it man you know and, and they get an automatic pass because they're in positions where people automatically assume if they're in that position, they wouldn't be in that fucking position if, uh, they wouldn't be in that position because people wouldn't allow them, you know? So that's what I'm, that's the whole problem is we just keep on, we were wondering why everything's so wrong. But everything's so wrong because we keep on coming from a position where the narrative was laid down. So the story, we needed like take our story back even further, you know, to really figure it out because we're not going to figure it out starting from chapter six. You know what I mean? We're just going to have to keep on making the best of a shitty story. Oh. Oh. Man, it's so hard. It's so hard being alive, knowing that this is all about me right now instead of my son, you know? And that's why I don't even want to be doing this. Because it's so fucking selfish. Um, so the doctor came in and it was bad, man. You know, he ignored what people were telling him and I got pissed. I went off on him. I mean, he walked out, you know, I went off cause he was disregarding. He was acting like the, like the witness statements and pe what we were saying, he was disregarding and it was very, it was two things. And he was just dis completely disregarding it. You know? And I guess I better say those two things now. Just in case, because man, they, there's shit going on that just doesn't make sense, guys. It's not like normal, just every day. No, this is like no coincidence shit. Like, Like, this is the kind of shit it takes cognitive, not my splits. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I can recognize it because one of my splits, like, I'm trying to transfer over to something else that we'll be able to comprehend and deal, you know? So, it's just not normal. It's just not normal. Man. <sighs> mm. I text my son and ex this morning and I haven't heard back yet um so the two things they said his the doctor was like oh, it's probably just much 
and he goes, when they took his thing, it was a hundred, and his grandfather goes, any, oh man, I, yeah, see, I can't even, it's just too much, it, it, it's just too much, um, but there were two things, anyway, so, long story short, I ended up running back to the thing to get his bags, and then I came back to the hospital and sat out in the parking lot until he got released, well, him and his mom came out, they got released, he got released, and him and his mom came out, and I said, and he gave me a big thumbs up. He had a big smile on his face and he shook his head and he said, yeah, you know, everything's good. So, so he was fine. And uh, my ex-wife was there and he went to the car behind me to grab something. And I said, Jess, I said, can I talk to you real quick? And she said, yeah, what's up? And I looked her in her eyes and I said, you know, when we were together, um, I said, oh, I can only recall like three times, but I know you had panic attacks um, here and there. I said, and I just want to apologize to you, you know, cause I didn't know what they were. And um, she said, it's okay. And I said, thank you. You know, but that was a big one for me because that's really been on my heart is just that you know, because I can remember a couple times specifically where she had a, you know, and not even as bad as me, you know what I mean? Like, I remember one time we were driving in a car on a back road, and I guess I was driving a little too fast around a corner. And, you know, and I just, I can just picture, you know, when you grab your heart and you're like, <gasps> in that whole thing, and yeah. So, I've been wanting to apologize to her for a while now um, about that. Um, so yeah, that was good to get out. Um, <laughs> you know, and then my son, he, um, so I turned to him and he was, gave him a hug and said, all right, buddy, you know, you just take it easy and relax and, you know, and I said, look, man, don't let anybody, you know, you, you know how you feel, you know, what's going on with you, you know, only you do. And uh, he said, yeah, Dad, he's like, he's like, just take it easy, okay? I said, I will, buddy. And then, like I said, he ended up, we ended up texting last night real late. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, he was he was fine. But I just had to get this out there home. Yeah, in case it helps anybody else or helps you to see, like, what's going on with me, maybe, or... <laughs>